Hi, welcome to the Art Barn Studio YouTube channel. My name is Brandon Lawson and I am here to walk you through a new and cool paint along. We are gonna be painting a zebra together. Let's talk about things that you can use and what's better to use. Now, obviously, if you have a canvas, and I have two different sizes that I like to use, an 8x8 or an 8x10, it really doesn't matter, um, but canvases are what I am using in the video. Now, if you do use a canvas, you gotta make sure that you remember there are edges to the canvas. So as you are painting, you wanna make sure that you paint those sides of the canvas so when you hang it on the wall, it looks better. Now, what else can you use if you don't have canvas? Well, paper. It does need to be a heavy duty paper, like computer paper or notebook paper is not going to be your best option. Right here is just kids um, drawing paper that I have off Amazon. It's a thicker paper and it holds the paint a little bit better. This is okay. The best kind of paper, and you can buy this at Walmart, is watercolor paper. You don't have to have it this big. This is just what I have on hand. But the watercolor paper is a heavy duty paper and it will hold the paint um, very well. It won't like buckle and wrinkle. What else do you need? Let's talk paint brushes. Now, I love these little foam brushes because not only can you buy them in a pack of 50, but guess what happens when we're done with them? You throw them away. There's no washing. There's no cleaning. It is trash. So I always use one of these and I usually use the smaller foam brushes to do the first layer. Like for instance, with our zebra, it's going to be the blue paint. Now, the zebra was a little different because we had the white. I didn't paint the whole canvas, but these foam brushes grab a whole bag and keep them on hand. Other brushes I do use are a flat or a round brush. Um, these are great to have on hand. Again, these are just off Amazon, nothing fancy. And then always have a cup and paper towel to make sure we wash our brushes off and dab them on the paper towel. Other things you, I do use um, a pencil, a Sharpie, and a piece of chalk. Now chalk is a great tool because when you're drawing shapes and if you don't like the shape, you just gently wipe off the chalk. Now in this video, I'm gonna use a pencil because you won't be able to see the chalk because I'm actually drawing on a white canvas. So I still like to have chalk because it's an easy way to clean up and redo shapes if you don't like them. Pencil, you kind of have to erase and it can make a mess. Um, and then Sharpie, Sharpies are a great way to add detail at the end, like I do that with our zebra stripes. I help um, add the little points and some other things like the nostrils and the eyes. Again, it has to be completely dry. So a blow dryer is another great tool to have on hand, or if it's sunny and shiny outside, go lay your canvas in the sun for a few minutes and come back to it. But if you wanna keep moving, a blow dryer is a great way to use and blow dry between your stages of painting. So go grab all your materials, meet me back here, and we're gonna start drawing and painting our zebra. Okay, our paint along today is a zebra. Now we're going to do this a tad bit different than our normal paint alongs. One reason is the canvas is white, our zebra's body is mostly white. So we're not going to paint a base color on our canvas. So just be aware it's a little bit different. Our materials today, I have a paper plate. Make sure it's not actually paper, it has a coating so it doesn't soak through. I have a blue, a little pink, and some black. Um, again, you will not need white because the canvas is white. We have a foam brush, chalk, a permanent marker, I'm going to be using a pencil to draw with so you can see because the chalk you won't be able to see possibly on my camera, a paper towel and some water. Again, paint brushes. Um, you can have a flat brush or you can have a round brush. I am possibly going to end up using my small flat brush and it's probably and then my foam brush will be the, the, the big part of it. So again, I'm using my small um, flat brush. So we're gonna start off by drawing the zebra shape. Again, you can use chalk, so if you mess up, you just take a damp paper towel and wipe it off. Again, you I can see it as I'm standing here over it, but I know you won't be able to see it on camera. So I'm gonna use a pencil. You are able to use a pencil, it just, you can't rub it off like chalk. So we're gonna start with the head shape and our zebra is not going to technically look like a zebra. He's gonna look more like a cartoon zebra. So his head is gonna be kind of an oval egg shape. Um, we need to leave room at the top for his ears to go that way and then 
his neck is going to go off to the left. So I kind of want to do it more on the right side. Again, if you're using chalk, you should be able to simply wipe it off if you don't like the shape that you drew. If you do use pencil, you just got to make sure that you clean it off. Um, or you cover it up with your paint. Okay. So we have the main head shape. Now his ears, one's going to go to the left, one's going to go to the right. And I always say they're kind of like a leaf shape or a frowny face. Then you go to the tip and you draw a smiley face. So we're going to leave some room. A frowny face. Smiley face. And then we're going to do that same shape on the inside because that's where the pink will go. Remember, at any point when you want to catch up, just hit pause. I will still be here. Okay, for his neck, again, we're going to go off where the ear is. I'm just going to draw a diagonal line down to the side of the canvas. And then not quite under his chin, we're going to move up some. All the way to the end of the canvas. Make sure those two lines, they're parallel and they go off the canvas because you don't want it to look like a floating head. Okay, for his hair, the in between, we're going to do kind of a half rectangle. You go up, over, back down. Up over back down we're gonna put two here and then we're gonna do that going down the top of his neck up over come down and they can be all different doesn't have to be perfect okay inside the face we're gonna draw a line to separate the nose from the face. And I'm just going to mark a nostril will be here, a nostril there, an eye here, an eye here. I just made them kind of small so I wouldn't mess up. Um, now, as for the stripes, we're going to paint those on with our black paint. So again, they're kind of random, so I'm not going to draw them out. First, I'm going to get, put my pencil away or your chalk. We're going to start with our foam brush and we're going to start with blue. Now, um, you've got to use this edge because we're not going to paint in our zebra. You want to work your way around. So if you don't feel comfortable using a foam brush, if it's too big, go ahead and switch to your normal brush. I just try to make cleanup a little bit easier so I don't. Or maybe at home you don't have a normal paint brush. All you have are these. So I'm going to... Fast forward this again, I need to work slow around these spots. I may pull out my little brush just to get those little areas. Again, these are okay if I paint over them quite a, a little bit because that's going to be black. So black will be able to cover up that blue. But again, where it needs to be white, which is the neck, the head, the nose, the outside of the ears, I want to make sure I keep that completely out of. Okay, so I have added the background. Now, if you notice, I did end up painting over all the hair. I just felt like it was going to take forever just to go through individual ones. So, you know what? If I don't see it and I have to redo it, no big deal. Um, I did keep those two. But I did have to pull out my little brush because it was just too much for that big foam brush. And sometimes foam brushes come in different sizes. Um, I have smaller ones than this, so it probably would have been better. But again, I do want to smear out all the paint. I don't want to leave any goops because then it'll be um, take longer to dry because we're going to have to let this layer dry before we move on. And don't forget, if you have a canvas, if you saw me, I turned and painted those edges. Um, I did leave this corner white just because that's the um, zebra's neck. So again, and again at the bottom too, got that little spot I added. Make sure you do, don't forget to paint the edges. Leave your brush. Make sure you get it soaking in the water. Um, gently bounce it off 
the top a foam brush this is going in the trash you don't need to clean that off but if you used a brush and then make sure you dab it on the paper towel getting all that blue off um, again you can blow dry this layer and it will speed the process along or if it's nice and sunny outside just let it sit out um, in the sun for a little bit but again we really want this layer dry before we move on to the next Okay, now that this layer is dry, we're going to move to our pink and our black. So we're going to start with the lightest, which is our pink. Please make sure that your paintbrush is completely clean of the blue. Um, dab it on the paper towel. The inside of the ear is going to be pink. You really don't need much. Or if you don't have pink, you could do a red. And then once we do that, I'm going to wash the pink off and I'm going to dab it on the paper towel and I'm going to move to my black. Now the lines, I'm going to leave to my permanent marker once we're all done. What I'm going to use the and the dots, what I'm going to use the black for is just the stripes. So on the neck, and they're more pointed. It's probably why you want a small brush. And they're coming from the top of the neck and the bottom. Again, these are very random. And then on the face, we're going to do the same thing. They're kind of going, I don't want to do too many on the face. I'm just going to do one. And then right above the nose, not in the nose. And then two on this side, or three, sorry. Kind of like eyebrows. And then a few little... In the ears, just the white part. My goal was not to make it look like a pattern. Okay, and then these little hairs right here are gonna be black. And if I paint over the blue a little bit, that's fine. I just want to cover up that white. And then again, going back over the neck ones, I'm just going to use my brush. I'm not going to worry about drawing them out. If you'd like to use your chalk, this would be a good place to use your chalk to draw them out, but technically they're just going to be lines. Okay. So again, get your brush, dab it off the bottom of your bowl, get all the black paint, dab it on your paper towel, make sure it's clean. And now I'm done with all the paint. I'm gonna move to the permanent marker, but again, this whole layer has to be dry because if you try to draw it on wet paint with a permanent marker, the permanent marker won't work. So I'm gonna clean up my water, paper towel, and all the trash, and then we'll come back and finish the details with our permanent marker. Okay, we are on the last detail. Again, everything should be dry before we use the permanent marker. So just make sure that it is dry because we don't want to smear it. Again, make sure your permanent marker is um, pretty good because sometimes they don't, again, work with paint well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace that line where the face is that I drew with my pencil. I'm going to trace the line I drew with my pencil across so it separates the nose and the head. Again, the little dots I drew for the nostrils, little dots I drew for the eyes, and then I'm going to trace around the pink. Oop, my pink is not as dry as it was. So. And 
And if you want to, you could always trace up the neck just to separate a little bit better. And if your paintbrush wasn't small enough for any of the, the black stripes on the ears, you could always have done it with the permanent marker. Or maybe, like I know some of them I didn't make as pointed as I want. So I'm going to take my marker and kind of fix them. It's like a round point. Same thing with the face. Permanent markers are great um, to have as art supplies. Not only you could use a permanent marker to draw, um, and then you can paint over the permanent marker and it won't um, mess up the lines like a watercolor marker but then you can use them for acrylic and add some detail. Um, and last but not least, do not forget to sign your artwork. Again, I just write my initials in the bottom corner. It's hard to see with it's dark. Um, you always wanna write it in one of the bottom corners, not across the top. So I hope you enjoyed painting a zebra today. I hope you come back. If you'll check, I have more free paint alongs and also I have paint alongs that you can purchase and you can purchase all the things that I use today um, in the kit to paint along with me. Hope you enjoyed.